never get to see her. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, none of them didn't break any record for me, but Jesus took away my record of sin, so I'm going to make some noise for Jesus, hallelujah, 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 blessed be your name Lord. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord this morning, tonight. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and just give Him glory and honor and praise. Because that's who He is. He deserves it. Hallelujah. We should have been dead. We should not be here tonight. But we serve a God who cares for us. Oh God, who's big enough to be everywhere, but personal to take care of our needs. Let's just worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
matchless Lamb of God. That's who He is. That's who He is. And He's a whole lot more than that. Hallelujah. He's God manifest in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Him bodily. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please greet at least three persons and welcome them to this service this evening. Hallelujah. Just nothing I like better than when God's children get together. Feel so good just being here again. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. The Lord has been very good to us, brethren. And it's the choir just sang, Brother Kevin just sang, it's amazing all that the Lord has done for us. And I, as I worshipped, I said to the Lord, the amazing thing about it is not so much the number of things you've done, but that you have done them for me. <laughs> oh Lord. One of our precious brothers, Brother Kid, is just coming to share with us. Amen. The Lord is working in the lives of his people and he's coming to tell us a little bit about it. Praise God. Praise God. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Um, tonight I'm standing here to testify, not only to testify, but to speak of how the Lord has changed my life. And this is a testimony of, I should say, of confession. The Lord has done so many things in my life over the past years. I started out with Christ in so many ways that you know, the first time I've been baptized in the Lord, I baptized in the New Testament Church of God, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There were so many things I was doing in Christ. And, you know, I get dropped out. And the reason why I got dropped out is the lust of flesh. Woman. It was a down over me so much that, you know, I think the world of good was women. The enjoyable ways of having women here, there, and everywhere. You know, I get dropped out from there. I, come, I was living in Redis those time, and I come in town to live and, you know, I was going on and on. Every day is woman. Every day is woman all over the place. I have my wife and, you know, I was searching, you know, to find enjoyment 
but you know, I think that was all for me. Anyway, I started out to get invited here at Wildman Street, and I was coming here where I got baptized. I think everything was over, but no. It's still back in the woman stage of life, the lust of flesh. Um, I get go back out in the world. When I used to take my wife here, it just to take her here, leave her, and gone to a next woman house to enjoy myself. And I was going on and on and on there. Believe everything was all the best. But you know, the greatest thing about it, the Lord that kept in me, doing things to me, you know, while doing all of those things, I was like I was hiding, you know. I was hiding from God because, you know, when you look at it, you know, if you're going to thief something, you look in front of you, look behind you, you never look up because you don't want to look in God's face to know that whatsoever you're doing is wrong. That's it, Jesus. And I was there going, dropped my wife off at church, gone, you know. But one day I get stuck. I come back here, and, you know, I was get grounded back in Christ. I take a renewal of vow to the Lord that all of those things that I'm doing stop right there and then. I didn't get baptized over. I get a receival back into church. And brethren, I'm telling you, the Lord has kept me. The Lord is keeping me. The Lord is doing so many things in my life. You know, when I see my wife cry night after night, quarrel with me night after night to see the things that I've done and the lie that I'm telling her. You know, sometime I told her that the company work, I have, to, I have to go to the country to do things for the company. No, it's not that. It's to go out and weaken that woman. To, to, to be in there with another woman and know that my wife is there crying her heart out. You know, sometimes when I'm there, conviction holds me so much that when I look at it and I said, why should I do this to my wife? I have a wife. Why am I doing this? You know, the Lord speak to my heart so many ways, but I was so stubborn. You know, I was so stubborn looking at just the enjoyment of another woman, searching for another woman. What I'm searching for, I don't know. I don't know. But the Lord has changed me around right now. Today I can stand to you and confess my sins of testimony to you who are listening right now. You know, I'm just saying this and I'm chewing out this. Men in the church, you know, our life being organized in a way that sometimes we do things and don't even know that we're doing it. Sometimes we do things and we don't even believe that we're doing it. You know, women in the church doing the same because sometimes they go out and have another man with them doing the same as I do, you know. And God has spoken to me so many times, you know, to, to come in here and say this testimony both for the men and the women inside here, you know. God wasn't pleased with me 
And if you're in the church doing it, God doesn't please with you either. No. We have to do the right thing. Stand up for God. Going out there, saying the word to people, preaching the word of God to people. You know, let them understand that God live and God can change things around. Just as we change my life, that I can stand here today and give this testimony. God has doing so much for me since I've been back in church. You know, I, I form a group and the WhatsApp, God blessing in art is my topic on that WhatsApp. And I've been so, doing so many good things, people out there. I have 128 people on that WhatsApp. What every morning I minister to them. Every morning I send out prayer requests and prayer to them. I send out inspiration to them, songs, Bible scriptures, everything that I can think of. I prayed before I send them. Sometimes they call me back and said, Mr. Kid, our Brother Kid or Sir Kid, whatever they want to call me. Some call me Aureus because some know me as Aureus. And they request prayer. I prayed for them. You know, I send a word of prayer for them on that WhatsApp. Oh, God. Sometimes they call me in tears. Praying, pray for me, Mr. Kid. Pray for me, Aureus. Pray for me, Sir Kid. You know. Some said, no, I don't want you to put down. I want you to pray for me right there and then on this phone. And I prayed for them. Right now, I was praying for a young miss out by Windward Road there. She's sick. She couldn't walk. And I take that as my challenge. To pray for that young miss. And right now, that young miss is walking right now. Oh God. Sometimes my wife sees me on WhatsApp hours at night, but she don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing the Lord's work. I'm doing the Lord's work. I'm at work. I prayed my co-workers. We have a group at the work where we prayed every morning. I prayed for them. We prayed together. Sometimes we go to Devon House in the evening and we pray, you know. That's what the things that I'm doing. And right now, God is blessing me. God is blessing me. Look at where I am now. I was like a falling log that fall on the ground. And you know what a, a, a carpenter do with that log? He carried to the workshop, cut it up, and he making a fine piece of structure out of that piece of log. That was I. God bring me up. He refined me. Look at me now. I can shake off sin. And I'm gloriously graceful in God because it takes me from sin to grace. You know, I'm just doing the Lord's work. And right now, I'm standing for God. I'm climbing, climbing the hills for God. I'm doing his work. One time I would just feel shy to do certain things, but right now, if I'm in the church and the church called on me to do anything, I, I will just go and do it. You know, I'm, I'm going to do it because there's a lot of work I'm doing. So brothers and sisters, stand fast in God. Stand fast in God who is inside you doing as I do. It's time for stop. It's time for turn around and stand up in Christ. Oh God, may God bless each and every one of us because, you know, our time is near. God is coming and if we, when we read the Bible and tell, if the Bible tell about his coming, we can see that the time has changed so much. You know, look at the little children. Six years ago to now and see what those little children doing. From a child born from his mother's womb and the breeze blow on that child. That child has sense. That child know what he's doing. Because no, we, we, things been happening right in front of our eyes. That is unbelievable. It's very unbelievable. 
I remember telling about this vision that I get, that I was in hell. The last testimony I was, I was in hell burning with Satan down there. And, you know, when I cry out, I ask God that for, to forgive me for my sins. God that reached down out of hell and draw me up and put me on a rock and said, this is where I want you to be. After that, I got another vision again. That was about four weeks ago. From the east, the, the, the cloud become dark. And in that cloud, there's a little, little like a shining light between the dark section of cloud. And there was fire in front coming down on earth. And water behind the fire. And it coming with a terrible sound. You know, it coming from the east, coming around. And when I look and I ask God to help me that I can restore myself, that breeze and that fire come towards me. And at a little distance it stops and everything quiet down. And it's like the following morning I in that vision, like I wake in that following morning and I went downtown and I see we are on the east side. It's pure water cover the whole building down that side. You know, and when I look at it, I said, what God has been telling me? What he's telling me? To stand fast in liberty and live for him. You know, Virgin, let me just be serious with God. Let us stand up for Christ. Let us be the, in the place where we're supposed to be. And stand for him. Because God is forever. He is forever. And brethren, may the Lord bless us all. That when the time has come. It's not only one, two. It's not, it's not only two. It's at the field working. One missing and one leave back. It shall be two in the field missing and the two gone. None missing. That is always we need to get serious in Christ. None must leave behind. Two of them must go to God. That's all we want to live for God. But my aim and my determination is to live for him. To lift up his banner high. You know, if I'm outside there and you see I'm slipping up, don't be afraid to... Brother kid, you are falling on the wrong track. Get back on the right track. Don't be afraid. Because we are flesh. We are, and, and we must fall. When we fall, don't stay down. Rise. Shake off yourself and go again. Don't tell yourself you can't go. Because the evil force of the darkness be upon us and it be upon us terribly. Terribly. So, I pray that each and every one of you, blessed to your name. Bless the Lord. Pray for me. Bless the Lord. Let's stand, everybody. Let's lift our hands and give the Lord thanks. Sometimes we think when we talk about change of persons on the outside. But God wants to do a work with those of us who are on the inside. And I understand that even those of us who might not have been through what Brother Kid has been through, we still need a lot of change in our lives. Let's lift our hands and worship God. What a God, brethren. What a God. He's still working on us. It could have been so different. But he's still working on us. Just tell the person beside you, he's still working on me. Oh, I feel like worshiping the Lord some more. tell somebody else he hasn't given up on me
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have four precious young ladies that um, are coming now to minister. And um, we give the Lord thanks for them. And um, I love all of them. And um, I just believe God is helping our young people. And um, let's be blessed by their ministry.
hands and holy is your name. Salvation and glory, honor and power, he is wonderful. Great is he who's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, he is wonderful. to come please I believe there is choir practice tomorrow and on Wednesday what time does it start 6 o'clock and that's for all our choirs praise God and all our musicians praise the Lord and on Friday. Everybody say Friday. 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 Friday at 9 o'clock. We would like for you to come at 8.30 though. At least 8.30 for prayer. And um, I just believe the Lord is going to do wonderful things. Then on Sunday 8 and 11 but come a half an hour earlier for both services amen I, I'm believing the Lord and I would like for us to invite as many people as we can amen brother Kit could invite 120 persons just by whatsapp amen amen can you think of that folks 120 persons that's amazing all right, all right, all right. Is there anybody here who, who just, you, you're sitting because you can't stand? I think I did say let's all stand, so I'm hoping that you're able to stand. If you're old and feeble or sick, 
and it's difficult for you to stand, you can remain seated. We, we always understand that. But if you're just tired, you have to fight against that. We don't want you to drop asleep. You might break your neck. A young man was sleeping in church while Paul was preaching and he broke his neck. And since Paul isn't here, John is here. Eh? Marsha is here too. Amen. We're going to be receiving an offering and uh, we're giving as unto the Lord. Lord, we praise you. We bless your matchless name. Please, Lord, as we give, bless us. And those who are not able to give, you will bless them too. May this offering be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Singers and musicians are leading us in worship as we come. Sunday, get out so get out your make believe farm, and let's do this thing right. You got it out already.
if you know that you're a friend of God, Hallelujah. walk out Woo. with your palm. Woo. Don't stop waving those palms. Walk out.
every praise, every praise, every word of worship, every praise, every praise. Oh, every praise, brother. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Amen. 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 We 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 have to be in a church where every praise is to God. Every praise. Every praise. None belongs to us. Every praise. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Every praise. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship God. Tell him you are my savior. You are my deliverer. Hallelujah. 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 My healer, my way maker, my, my everything. My everything, my everything, my all in all. Praise God. I want to ask if you would just turn with me to First Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. Verses... 10 to 12. Every praise. First Samuel 3, 10 to 12. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak. For thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. When I begin, I will also make an end. When I begin, I will also make an end. When I begin, I will also make an end. In other words, if I am not going to make an end, I will not begin. Ask the person beside you, has God begun a work in your life? If they say yes, tell them he's going to finish. When I begin, I will also make an end. You could interpret this based on how it is set out. At the same time I begin, I'll make an end. When I devise the beginning, I devise the ending. You may be seated. God does not start anything that he does not intend to finish. I am sorry. I'm coming against accepted belief. For some, God does not start anything that he does not intend to finish. He does not begin work on any project that he cannot bring to a successful conclusion. In fact, God does not start anything that he has not already finished. In Acts chapter 15, and verse 18, James said, Known unto God are 
all his works from the beginning of the world known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. God can speak about things that have not yet happened as though they have already happened because God is not like us. We speak about things that we intend to do and we fully intend to do them. But before we can do them, a little mosquito intervenes and chick V and zik V have us down. But there is no mosquito that can give Jesus chick V. Brothers and sisters, our God is omnipotent. I'm, 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 I'm moving the thing out of the realm of a song now and out of apostolic theory. I said our God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's El Shaddai. God Almighty. He does what he wants to do and no devil can stop him. No devil can stop him. If you read Psalm number 2, Psalm number 2 says, Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Who do they take counsel together against? Against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us break their bands asunder. Cast away their cords from us. Do you see God getting disturbed? Do you see God worrying? Do you see God calling the angelic host to fast? Seven days of prayer. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them. He doesn't even have to do anything. Just speak and vex them in his sore displeasure. That's the God that we serve. When he begins, nobody can stop him from making an end. Nobody can tell God no. When God says yes, it's yes. He says, I am he that openeth and no man shutteth. I don't care how bad you are. If God opens a door for me, you can't shut it. I don't care how many strings you can pull. If God opens a door, nobody can shut it. And God says, if I shut a door, nobody can open it. You could have all the money in the world. You could have all the contacts. If I shut it, it's shut. Because my name is God. Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. Brethren, I'm saying this to you because I don't want you to worry about how you're going to make it. I don't want you to be disturbed about how you're going to make it. If God didn't intend to see you through to the end, you wouldn't have started. God doesn't have any time to waste. He doesn't work on any projects that are not going to come to fruition. He doesn't need any help. And when he works, Genesis chapter 18, verse 10, he shows up to Abraham with two angels. And he has something to eat. Then he speaks to Abraham. He says, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women so Sarah was not just barren now 
It was over. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. What Sarah was remembering, precious memories. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I want to ask somebody that. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is it, is it too difficult for God to keep you in a wicked world? Is that too hard for the Lord? Is it too hard for God to provide for you? Is it too hard for God to deliver you? What is too hard for the Lord? I will return unto thee at the time of life. They didn't even believe it. But when you are in God's plan, he's going to carry through. We don't believe he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. Paul said that. Even if you don't believe, he abides faithful. If God says, I'm going to take you over, he's going to take you over. Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah says, Ah, Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing, there is nothing too hard for thee. Oh God, brethren, I wish you could believe this. I wish you could believe it. I wish you could stand and say, there is nothing too hard for thee. Just, just look at your situation and say there is nothing too hard for God. Just look at the rent that you want. Say there is nothing too hard. Just look at the bills that you have and say there is nothing too hard. Oh, I'm fighting some spirits. I feel it. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Nothing. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Hail thou that art highly favored. In other words, you didn't do anything to deserve this. It's not that you are living such a beautiful life. You are just highly favored. That's all. You're just favored. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. See, when you have favor with God, that's more than money. Favor is more than blessing. Favor, you see, blessing comes. When you have favor, you have blessing. When you have favor, nobody can touch you because you have favor. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. I don't see how it's possible. How is this going to happen? And the 
angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about physical. The Holy Ghost. Everybody say, the Holy Ghost. Shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. There up for also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for with God. Nothing! Nothing shall be impossible. Jesus said it. He said with men it may be impossible, but not with God. But with God, all things are possible. I kind of I'm wanting to take the limits of the God I serve. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of wanting nobody to tell me what God can do for me and what God can't do for me. I'm kind of wanting to break through your little glass ceiling. I've been too restricted by what men say is possible with God. He still can furnish a table in the wilderness. He still can bring forth water from the rock. He still can make a way through the sea. He still can make the mountains skip like rams and the little hills like lamb. Still can do it. When God begins a project, he does not abandon it until it is completed. He's the one doing the work from start to finish. Philippians 1 verse 6. Paul gives the disciples in Philippi a wonderful assurance. He writes being confident. We are in doubt about if God can carry me through. We, we are nervous about whether God can do it or not. And we quote these scriptures, but we don't believe them. We, we just talk about them, but we don't believe them. Being confident, say confident. Have you ever been confident in anything? When you're confident, you step out. When you're confident, you don't back up. When you're confident, you, 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 you get rid of doubt and fear. When you're confident, you move past obstacles. Being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in you. Confident that he will perform it. Until the rapture. Paul said. He. Which hath begun a good work in you. He will perform it. You don't have to perform it. He will perform it. And confident of that. So I I'm, 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 I'm found that confidence. To believe God for my own life. Tired of living in fear. Tired of not being sure. Tired of being nervous every time the lights go out. No more. I'm confident that the God who started a work in me is going to finish it. I heard the little children singing, don't talk defeat to me. I'm a child of God. And I've got the, how many believe you have the victory right now? Can't sign your body, but you have the victory. You don't.
don't believe this, you think God is just funning. It's very clear from the context that the one who begun the good work in the Philippian disciples is God. It's very clear that it is God who will carry the work to completion. Tell the person beside you, take yourself out of the way. Come on, tell, tell the person beside you, take yourself out of the way. This is God's work. Shake your neighbor and say, get out of the way and give God a chance to work. Listen to what Isaiah says. Isaiah 26 verse 12. He cries out and he says, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for you. Thou also hast wrought all our works in us. You have done everything. Everything that has been done, you have done it. Don't allow anybody to scare you with Philippians 2.12. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't let nobody scare you with that anymore. Remind them that verse 12 is incomplete and not capable of being understood without verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Anytime you hear anybody come to you and say, work out your own salvation, tell them, yes I can because God is working in me. God is working in me, giving me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. God is giving me energy deep inside of me to do what he asks me to do. He doesn't say do it and expects me to do it by myself. He's the one doing it in me. 2 Corinthians 5, 1-5. to I want to read this from the New International Version. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 5. I, I want you to notice when you read your Bible how Paul talks. Paul never says, I think. Or maybe. See, Paul wasn't walking around. Mm -mm. Paul, had, Paul knew too much about the power of God and the plan of God and the call of God and the election of God and God's predestination. Paul always walked like this. None of this Christianity for Paul. He says, now we know, know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. While we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Paul says this, this house from heaven is the very reason why you are saved. And he says God has given you a deposit has it. I don't pay me. The Holy Ghost, which is your guarantee. Everybody say guarantee. 
is your guarantee that God is going to do it. Friend, Jesus has no Holy Ghost to waste. If he did not know that he could take you through to the end, you would not be filled with the Holy Ghost. No! He, you are not an experiment to God. He didn't fill you with the Holy Ghost to see whether you could make it or not. He said you are going to make it. I don't have any measure of the spirit of God to waste when I give you the Holy Ghost. It's because I know. Know what I'm capable of doing. I wouldn't waste it. Wouldn't give you. If I didn't know that I could see you through to the end. It's God. I want to say it again. It's God who is doing the work in us. I want to ask everybody in this room a question. What I believe is a relevant question. Has God Almighty begun a work in your life? I'm asking. Has God Almighty begun a work in your life? If he has, then he will certainly finish it. If he did not intend to complete the job, he would not have accepted the contract. I say if God had not intended to complete the job, he would not have accepted the contract. It's as simple as that. Do you have the Holy Ghost? If the answer is yes, then you have a guarantee within you. God gave you the Holy Ghost to guarantee. He said, this is a down payment. This is a deposit. I'm going to finish what I started. When I begin, I will also make a way. Amen. So if you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing and shout? If you're keeping yourself, then you have to be worried. If you saved yourself, then you have to be worried. But if you know the Lord is keeping you, when I begin, I will also make an end have to understand this folks first corinthians chapter one verse four to nine marvelous paul says i thank my god always on your behalf listen now for the grace of god which is given you by jesus christ that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of christ was confirmed in you so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen now. Who shall also confirm you? How long? Unto the end. Unto the end. We read these scriptures and we don't understand them. He will confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. That's the guarantee. God is faithful. Not that the church you go to is so wonderful. God is faithful. Not that the choir is all that, but God is faithful. Not that the pastor is all that, but God is faithful. God is faithful. By whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. It wasn't Pastor Bartlett that called you. Paul informs the Corinthian disciples that God will confirm them to the end so that they will be blameless when our Lord returns for his church. Listen, the word confirm means to make strong. It 
means to establish. The word blameless is a translation of a Greek word which means free from accusation. Free from accusation. The word does not mean perfect. It refers to those against whom no charges can be brought. Blameless. Can't bring a charge against me. These persons are justified. They are uncondemned. And there is no ground of accusation that may be brought against them. Paul wants us to understand that God will work so effectively in the lives of those whom he has redeemed that they will be made strong and established to the very end so that they will be free from all blame in the day when the Lord returns. Listen to how the New Living Bible renders verse 9. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. God will do this. For he is faithful to do what he said. And he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to the message now. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 from the message. God who got you started in the spiritual adventure shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never, he will never give up. He will never give up on you. Never forget your hands and worship God. He will never. Don't forget that. Don't forget it. I'm not talking to you about some feel good stuff. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. When we understand that the work is God's work from start to finish we will be better, to, better able to appreciate what Paul wrote in Romans 8 verse 1. Therefore now, there is not even one bit of condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why is this so? Paul tells us in verses 28 to 34. And we know, here it's again, we know, we know it's not a guess. They stole your car. No, that God is going to work it together for good. Your house burned down. No, that God is going to work. We know. No. I'm tired of being kicked around by the devil. Tired. I'm just tired. I'm, I'm just kind of tired. Tired of that. Tired of that. I have decided to do some kicking now. No. That all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow. He also did pre destinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified and them he also glorified what shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Paul is saying if he has given the best, he will give the rest. There's nothing more he can give or better he can give than his son. If he gave up his son the best, he will give you the rest. Let's stop making God a liar with our lives. Hallelujah. 
shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. He yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also maketh intercession for us. Who dares accuse us. Whom God has chosen for his own. No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he's sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Who would dare tangle with God? Who, who wants to get into a heavyweight contest with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us. That's what Jesus is doing now, sticking up for you. Telling God he's my child, she's my child. When I begin, I will make an end. God is determined to save you. God is not going to abandon you. God is not going to leave you in the lurch. Men will rise up against you. Devils will rise up against you. So what? That seated in the heavens shall laugh. Cast what God's plan. I want to close. He said some things Wednesday night. Let me tell you what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. And people have gone through church all their life not sure if God loves them. I'm meeting people who were born in the church just living in condemnation because of something that happened many years ago. And they don't believe that God has forgotten. Because the church hasn't. I'm so glad it wasn't the church that called me. Can't get past it. Just never, not, not one day in their life had they, have they had any assurance that if the Lord should come now, I'll make it. Just guesswork. Just, just feeling as if God saved me on a trial and error basis. Maybe, but maybe not. Aren't you tired of that now? Ephesians 2.8, Paul says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship He's working on us. What Greek word could be, could be, could mean we are his masterpiece. Let's 
That's all this time. I'm going to stop there. Brothers and sisters, the God that we serve I don't, know if, I don't know if we understand. I don't know if we understand. Sister Jackson testified this morning about backsliding, leaving church. Leaving church. So, so, who was the one that followed her when she walked out of the church. Who you, you think when 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 somebody leaves church, God sits down in church? God is saying, Oh long run short catch. Who who convicted her when she was out there? She said that she Felt the anointing in her little church back home after she had backslidden. Ran through the door. But the hat blew off as she was running and blew back through the window right into church. Come on now. If we were in a church that was anything like what the Lord wanted, we could have said, where are all the backsliders who have come back, who can testify that it wasn't the church that brought you back. It wasn't a street meeting that brought you back. God came for you. God came for you. God came for you when nobody didn't remember you. God said, come. When I begin, I will also make an end. And when you come back, you come back stronger. If I ever were to preach like I feel it tonight, you would throw me out. Because I would preach and tell you that sometimes your failure was ordained by God. Our hands and worship God. You think you understand God? You think you understand God? Huh? Think you understand God? Let me show you something. I told you that I was finished. But let me show you the God that we serve. Judges, Judges, 14, man called Samson. Show you something. There are things about the God that I serve that I don't understand. Judges 14, Samson went down to Timnath. And saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother. Where did this woman come from? She was a what? Philistine. Told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Rightly so, rightly so. Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Never. So it wasn't the first time. Never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all thy people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. And said, Samson said unto her, get her for me. For she pleased me well, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. 
that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Work that out when you go home. Because I can't work it out. Lift your hands and worship God. Take Jesus out of your test tube. He intends to save you. He's going to save you. I want to say to some young person, God is going to save you. Folks, this is... Let, let me see, see. In our carnality, we think God is like us. But God is not like us. There are people that we would like for God to put out of the church. You're not hearing me. There are people that we would like for God to discard. Because maybe it would make life easier for us. It wouldn't make life easier for you. It would make life more difficult for you because God is using them to perfect you. And let me tell you, honey, God doesn't love you more than he loves them. There are some young people in this church, God is getting ready to step into your life and create havoc because he has planned to use you. You don't want to be used. But he's going to step into your life. And put hell in your life. You don't know what I'm talking about folks. You know God will. God just to save you. God will wreck something. Jehoshaphat was sending ships. To get gold from strange countries along with King Ahab and the Bible says the venture was not successful because the ships were wrecked God said I don't want you in partnership with him go and mash up the business God will step into your home and mash up relationships for his glory Some young people in this church, the hand of God is on your life. But you're running. But keep on running. Keep on running. A lasso going just flash over your neck. And you're going to feel the pull. And going to pull you from the relationships. And pull you out of the mess and say, come, I'm ready to work now. Stand, stand again. Lift your hands and worship God. We older people, we must start to prophesy and speak life to our young people. We must speak life to them. Even if you see them smoking a spliff, just coming from church, speak life to them. Prophesy over them. I want to ask our young people to come to the altar. Matter of fact, I want everybody to come to the altar. Everybody, just come to the altar for 10 minutes. Everybody, sing and stay. I'm asking you to come because I want you to, 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 to walk out of your mind. I want you to walk out of your mind that says, I don't know if I will be saved. I want you to walk out of a backslidden mind because if your mind telling you that you're not going to be saved you're backslidden in your mind and God need to heal you you're making God a liar God says I saved you to keep you saved I don't care if your marriage is wrecked I don't care if you're divorced 40 times I don't care if you have had seven abortions. Those don't.
don't define you. What defines you is that you have the guarantee of my spirit. Somebody needs to decide, God, I'm going to partner with you and get this thing right now. Tired of this up and down thing, I want to get it right. Lift your hands and worship God. Lift your hands and worship Tell yourself, the God who begun a good work in me, he's going to perform it. hands and worship God people of God you are a winner not because of you sing it oh exceedingly abundantly
God, lift your hands and worship God. Come on, brethren, let's worship. When I begin, I will also make an end. God's word to you is I'm going to complete what I start. You know, you know, you know that he's not a God that delights in throwing the clay away. I want you to find somebody to pray with before you go now. Before you slip out, find somebody to pray with. Um, I, I, I want us to pray for each other. person whose hands you're holding is somebody that's going to make it by the grace of God. Yes, 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 yes. God is not through working on them. He hasn't taken off his overalls just yet. He loves you too much to let you go come on pray for each other now yes yes come on pray in the Holy Ghost
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at some young men. Some of them are playing instruments. Some of them are in the altar. I know the hand of God is on your life. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I don't want to call any names. But one day I'm going to. I'm getting bolder. Hand of God is on your life. And you're fighting like a fish on the hook. But I'm not worried. God is going to reel you in. Let's lift our hands and worship God. Some young ladies running from God. But that's all right. It's not up to you. It's not up to you. When God wants you, he's going to get you. There's no getting away from God. Praise God. Listen, folks. Listen, folks, as the people of God, we have to allow God's word to get into our spirits, to get into our minds. And see, see, we think when the scripture says every high thing, every, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, think those are lustful thoughts and so but but to think that you won't make it when God says you're going to make it you're exalting yourself against the knowledge of God because God says you're going to be saved doubt is not of God you, those imaginations need to be cast down and it's the word of God that you have to hold on to and say, I can't follow my feelings. I can't, I can't follow my feelings. I'm, I'm, I'm down now. I'm despondent now. So what? God has made promises to me. How could you, how could you feel that you are nobody? How could you feel that you are not important when God has valued you? you so much that he has given you a down payment and eternal life and you are saying you never went to college so false that's nonsense you have you have heaven in your soul and you feel like you are nobody you know how many billionaires you are far more wealthy than you know how many people would almost kill to have what you have you can't go to sleep at night. You're talking about you are nobody. The word of God needs to get into your spirit, man. Into your mind. Your brain is not your mind, you know. Your brain is just where your mind is.
to come. 